The study uh, that we presented at the American College of Cardiology meetings took the 10,000 patient database from the PROMISE trial and analyzed how men and women were different when they presented with symptoms suspicious for coronary artery disease. We looked at their uh, risk factors, uh, how many of them and, and uh, their risk scores, like a Framingham risk score, uh, what their physicians thought about the likelihood of having disease, and their rate of having a positive test. We had almost 5,300 women, which is probably one of the largest cohorts of women who've been uh, enrolled in a, large, in a cardiovascular trial of both sexes, so for comparison. And we had detailed information on all their risk factors. We also had a description of their chest pain characteristics, and this is really important. While prior studies have shown that women have a larger number of risk factors um, than men uh, presenting with coronary disease, many of them have said that women feel chest pain differently or feel angina and ischemia differently. What we found was that it was exactly the same. And so what this means for physicians is that you don't need to go hunting around for uh, unusual symptoms that are very nonspecific when you're looking for coronary artery disease in women, things like fatigue or nausea. Really, the majority of men and women both experience chest pain, and in fact, the women were more likely to experience squeezing chest pain and the men more likely to experience burning chest pain. The implications for practice of our study is that men and women need to be evaluated according to standards um, created in men and in women, respectively. That uh, a risk factor burden that's normal for a woman would be extraordinary for a man. At the same time, a man's risk of heart disease or having a positive test is higher than a woman's in spite of that risk factor burden. But it also means that we shouldn't expect, that we should expect the symptoms for both sexes to be fairly similar.